Shalom family. So I wanted to just touch briefly on, on one particular thing that's sticking its head out again and give you my opinion on that. So if I go to Matthew and it tells me, I think it's chapter 24 verse 42, watch, you need to watch because you know not the day that your Lord comes, right? Watch. It's a command. Watch for him. You'll know the season. You'll learn more. Books will be open. Things will be revealed to us as we get closer to the time. We should be eagerly and impassionedly seeking our Lord's return and awaiting him all the time. And that is what we should be doing. Now, I've gone to one or two big watchman sites that I, I'm connected with as well. And the amount of hate they've gotten because they were also convinced that 2022 would be it. Right up until Nisan was 2022, if you look at the calendars and everything, the way our brother T.W. Tram explained it as well. So now we've gone past that and suddenly the comments are just really bad. You know, I'm going to stop watching now. That's it. Finished. You're a false prophet. What? What the heck? You're just going to stop? We've taken you and we've shown you that this is a volcano and it's alive and there's lava coming out of the funnel. The lava is coming. You can feel the rumblings. You can see the smoke, everything. But because the lava never came in the week we expected it to come scientifically, you're just going to go build on the slopes of the volcano again and stop watching because you don't believe us. We're false prophets. And then a week or two after you finish building, boom, the lava comes out and the rocks smash your house. Now whose fault is it? You don't just chuck away so many billboards that God has blasting at us all the time, showing us that he's returning shortly and we should get our house in order. We should fill our lamps. We should be shining for him and seeking his face and desiring holiness and righteousness and living for God. We should be focused on that. We don't just stop all that because the high watch date has gone past. No. We eagerly keep looking for the next one because we know he's at the door. They're making seven-year covenants and deals seem like everyday occurrences now. Why? Because the seven-year treatment, or not treatment, treaty is ahead. It's at the door. It's happening this year. It's here. And by the time it happens, people won't bat an eye because there's been two or three or four seven-year treaties, and everybody knows we're heading to 2030, Agenda 2030, the plan for 2030, the change for 2030. They've indoctrinated mankind so that when it happens, they won't go, wait a minute. This was in that Bible thing, wasn't it? Revelations or something. No, they won't. They'll just go, oh, cool, 2030. Oh, seven-year treaty. Cool. No worries. Just another thing for 2030. These are billboards in your faces, wars, rumors of wars, pandemics, pestilences, violence, nation against nation, race against race, gods all over the place, pagan gods reviving, chaos in the church, absolute Satanism in your face, the devil everywhere in darkness, rituals taking place everywhere, and we're reporting on this and we're showing this. And still people want to smash these people that are trying to show and encourage and excite you to look forward. So yes, 2022 is behind us. Nissan's come and gone, the beginning of Nissan. We don't go and sit in a heap now with ash on our heads and get back into the world and fall back into darkness. No, no people. 7,000 years is determined for us. 7,000 years, 6,000 years is expiring shortly. We are at the end of that line, the very, very end, the last few seconds of existence. We want to quit now. That's what I don't understand about people. I mean, it's crazy. We've got to speak out when we see the signs, when we see the times. And, and these people are so excited and they get it wrong. And they get right back up and they're so excited again. I don't know if you've ever seen uh, Dr. Barry Orr. Oh, my word, he's hilarious. What I love about Dr. Barry and his Bible that looks like a unicorn exploded. It's so colorful. He's got such a passion and excitement for Jesus. 
and he drills and digs deep, deep into everything he should be digging deep into. The feasts of the Lord, the culture of the day, all these things, the modim, everything. He's drilling into it the whole time. And then he's like, this is it. This is it. We're going. And then we don't go. And then he pops right back up on your feet again. And we're back with a big smile on his face. And you can see they love the Lord. And I'm not upset at Dr. Barry for missing a date. He admits he's 0 for 0 on getting it right. But he's going to keep looking and watching. Because it's a command. I'm going to keep looking and watching. Because it's a command. Is it upsetting when those days go by? Yes. Very upsetting. I have long conversations with the Lord. I say when? How? Why? Which angel can I harass next? Because really, what the heck? Even I, who doesn't have much musical ability, could have blown the trumpet by now. Come on, people. How much more evil must there be before this trumpet's blown? We are at our wit's end. People are struggling to pay rent or finding a place to live. We're having vehicles repossessed. We're having financial issues. We're having sickness, disease, and death. We're having persecution. People are dying as martyrs for the Lord. How much more? If we wait much longer, will there be anyone around to collect? And, and we have these discussions with the Lord. And then the Lord just comes back and reassures us and says, You know what? One or two more days. How many more souls could have been reached and pulled in at the last second? You know, when you pull that net out of the out of the lake, Kinneret, and it's bulging with fish, and we're saying, Lord, look, the net's full, let's go. And there's one more fish that's jumping in and balancing on the edge and then flipping into the net. That's one more fish. It mattered to that one more. I don't know if you ever heard the story about the little boy walking on the beach. And he sees thousands and thousands of starfish that have washed up. The whole beach is just starfish. So he runs and he grabs a starfish and he runs back to the ocean and throws it in the water. Runs back up on the beach, grabs a starfish, runs back down to the water, throws it in the ocean. And he persists. And eventually a man walks up to him and says, what are you doing? He says, I'm trying to save the starfish. And the guy says, look how vast this is you're not making any difference you can't do it all and he grabs the next starfish and he says it makes a difference to this one and he runs and throws it into the ocean and that's what it's about as much as i want to get out of here to live is christ and to die is game i would rather be with christ but i will persist and work for the lord until he determines that enough has been done and it's time to go. He knows better than I know. And I don't want to stand there saying, I wanted to go two seconds earlier. And in that two seconds, we could have pulled 50, 60 more people to Jesus. And we can see Jesus is busy with revivals. I can see it when I go preaching. We can see God touching hearts and moving in people's lives. We're hearing testimonies of family that were hard hearted, that are turning back to the Lord. And we're here praying. We are standing on the dry ground of the water that's pulled back, that's forming in front of our eyes into a tsunami wave called the tribulation. And right on the tip, the great tribulation. We are seeing this happen in front of us. But instead of living in fear and stressing while we're seeing this, we're encouraging one another. We're praying for one another and we're rescuing as many as we can from the darkness into his glorious light. So love one another, pray for one another, encourage one another, because Jesus first loved you. And while you were lost, he waited for you and he sought you out and he captured your heart and he brought you back. He's still busy and he's going to be busy till he picks us up. So trust me, again, I feel it in a big way. And I have to constantly go to the Lord's feet and lie down there and say, Father, just help me to just trust in you and believe in you for everything that comes up in my dashboard of life and just tries to bring me down or attack or rise up against us and say, my God is with me. I can stand against all giants until the time is right. But hear me too. 
I am more excited than I've ever been because we have never been this close. When I see things like that seven-year agreement signed between the UK and Israel, I want to just explode from excitement because other people are like, oh, it's just normal. There's nothing to see here, dude. There is. You are just not seeing it. I'm seeing it, and I am super excited. I can't wait to get up there and explain this to all those up there and tell them how amazing it was to see Everything from the Bible coming to life in front of our eyes. And we have been destined to live in a time such as this. So, stand firm, trust in God. We're almost there. Run the race to the finish line. Love you all. Praying for you all. Shalom.